Salutations viewers, my name is Game Dame and welcome back to No One Game Dame Reacts where we have an official game overview for this game called No Rest for the Wicked. I actually don't remember if I've reviewed this game before, but hey, we'll we'll see if I have in the first like minute or so. But this is a pretty long trailer, about 25 minutes long. So let's go ahead and get this bitch started. So it's I mean, it's a pretty in-depth game overview if they got 25 minutes of it. I have seen this game before, actually. I don't recognize the art style or even if, or even the uh, the logo. Hey everyone, but... I'm Thomas. What's up, and Thomas? I'm Gennady. What's up, we Gennady? We founded Moon Studios during the rise of independent games in 2010. Back then, there like weren't all that many modern Metroidvania oh, games out there. Oh no, so wait. Created Ori and the Blind Forest. Yes. Okay. Ori became a huge so, success with gamers and critics alike, and it helped spark I think I recognize it only because our next project was supposed to be something totally it. different. Because for over twenty years we've been playing action RPGs religiously. Oh yeah, I recognize it now because of that guy. Be taken next. At the same time, we felt that we could do even more within the Metroidvania genre, and so we embarked on making Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Love, love them both. We both fantastic games. Another game that was incredibly well received, and that we're deeply, deeply proud of. But we had never forgotten about our dream of creating our own action RPG. We have left our mark on one genre before. Now we hope to do the same for action RPGs. Hell yeah! Our no, I would definitely play their, their, their game. Years I love Dory in the, the Blind Embrace. Forest and Ori in the Will of the Wisps. King Harrow is dead, and he's to be succeeded by his young and untested son, Magnus. Meanwhile, rumors of the return of a great plague, known as the Pestilence, are starting Whoa. to emerge. Madrigal Selene, a ruthless figure in the church, sees the Pestilence as a chance to prove herself. These forces converge on the backwater of Isola Sacra, where rebel groups and the provincial government fight for control amid the Isle's crumbling ruins. I kind of like her look. It's very badass. As a Serim, a member of an ancient sect devoted to defeating the Pestilence, you are sent on a merchant ship to investigate. En route, your ship Ooh. comes under attack from a rebel group known as okay, the Risen. It's not the, the, uh, the vessel the, easy, and the risen. Damaged. The ship stands little chance as it limps towards the shore and it is torn apart on the rocks at sea. You find yourself washed up at the shores of Isola Sacra, bruised and unarmed, and end up caught in the midst of both a vast political struggle and a fight for survival. Is this where we get to create our own character right there, or is this gonna be uh, like a predetermined character? Because sometimes that's how they start out, but... Well, I mean, we might find out in this video. With no rest for the wicked, we decided to handcraft an entirely seamless world. Nothing in this game is procedurally generated. I like the generated. perspective. Reminds me of Diablo, Instead of moving the latest across one. A randomly generated or just Diablo in general. Queen, throughout this showcase, you will notice that our world is dense, interactive, Uses a ton of it's just like the art style. That's that why it reminds me more of Diablo. But I like this kind of viewpoint. Okay, look at you. You'll be well served, always paying attention to your surroundings too. There are secret areas just about everywhere that usually reward you with precious items. I am all about that. After playing Baldur's Gate three, yeah, ain't Loot no way I'm not gonna look in every crack randomized. and crevice. It ensures that every player has their own unique experience. And that every time you explore an area, you might just finally get that last gold ore or new bad legs you've been waiting Ooh, for. Ooh, look at you getting all the good shit. We abandoned the old point and click model to move your character around. We wanted players to have ultimate control over their character. Every movement you make should feel tactile and be intentional. For nice! That reason, I like that. I, I feel like the using point and click USD is sometimes good, controller. but it really depends. With this game, I actually like the approach they took. You'll never make it to Sacrament over here. 
Instead of going for realism, our goal is always to create games that look like a painting come to life. I like that. Our artists Especially spend years with Ori meticulously modeling the Ori games. hand painting. All I hate when they get Obi too Sola realistic. Sakura. Uh, I sometimes I just want a game to look like a video game, but like in you a very stylized manner. You will traverse plenty of breathtakingly beautiful environments, lit with natural day and night cycles, immersed in dynamic weather. We also engineered a very special way of rendering our top-down world, where you can always see so much further into the distance. Oh, that's nice. That's that's Our nice that they have that. I didn't even notice that. To possible. be honest, if an object looks like you can climb it, then you can actually climb it. Whoa! And if an object is too thin to walk over it, you might just need to balance your way across. Oh, that's so cool! So they really made it a lot more RPG-like. Combat. This is important for, especially for an RPG. Right from the start, we decided to create an animation-driven combat system, which to us meant that every attack you make should be carefully considered. We wanted to bring weighty, precision-driven combat to the top-down space. Ooh, combat that precision. Several different genres, from ARPGs to fighting games. I like that actually, it makes it a little bit harder. In order to overcome an opponent, you need to watch out for telegraph behaviors and then punish accordingly. It's like, it's very Souls-like. And the Timing, way you have to time everything. Are incredibly important in Wicked's combat model. In the rest for the Wicked, every single weapon has its own unique moveset and stats driven by RNG. To die is a good day. You're going to die. Using this dagger, I'll have a hard time breaking this enemy shield. Let's try something different. What, like parrying or something? Or. Yeah, parrying. If you time it just right, you can parry incoming attacks, allowing you to exploit an enemy's opening. Ooh, okay, rogue. Gear in the West for the Wicked comes in four different rarities. White items are common. Unlike in other ERPGs, they're not trash loot. We instead made those the most customizable. Blue items are rare. They offer only positive enchantments. Purple items are cursed. They offer very positive enchantments, but they also come with a cursed enchantment. Oh. Gold items are unique. They are specifically handcrafted by. I like how they have this and offer unique right here. Purple, especially purple items. That's really this interesting. Rare claim we with this little has cursed an curse, that increases my focus gain whenever I deal damage. <laughs> His movements are so different now with the fucking sword. That's as literally as big a hit as him, if not like bigger. Every weapon has a chance to drop with its own unique rune, which can then be Ooh. extracted and used on other weapons. That way, players can come up with their own unique moveset. It does you do can devastating focus damage. It is do a berserk build. Let's drive off. Oh, damn, he just got sliced and diced. But every now and then, you might not even need to use your weapons to get rid of an enemy. All you gotta do Sometimes, is knock him the fuck down. Every weapon yeah, but you won't get the loot, no most likely. The has its own bespoke moveset, custom made by our I'm not sure if you can pick up loot. Wash and stretch and other animation principles directly inform our combat design. 
Layered on top of that, enchantments that drastically impact weapon behavior and our deep rune system. All of yeah, I really fuck with the combat. We feel is it feels fun, really nice. Engaging and allows every player to when that feels, it looks really nice. Combat. Like it's a good top-down style type of combat. You have the when different it comes types to gear, of like armor, weapons and gear. There's a wide range of options, each with their own design and attributes. The way to yeah, I fuck with it. Even affects your movement in combat. For instance, if you opt in for a lighter, faster build, you can quick step out of enemy's way. Quick steps are fast and don't consume a lot of stamina. With medium weight build, your character will dodge roll. Those are slower and consume more stamina. For no rest for the wicked, we designed a soft class system. Oh, Instead look at all these presets. You into a character class that you then have to adhere to for the entire playthrough. We want you to have the flexibility and freedom to play as the type of character you want to. And oh, even that's come so up cool. With classes we haven't even thought of. So far, that's we've really shown what cool. It looks like with a more melee focused build. So that way you're not Let's focused mainly on just one character you can play as any type. Age. That is really nice, honestly. This character build uses a two handed stab. We have three rune specials available Blink, Firebolt, and Firebolt. Fighting multiple enemies is always tricky. When used right, Nova can be an absolute blast. Ooh, everyone got fucked. The uniqueness of each item you find to craft, being able to create any character build you can think of through our soft class system and the randomized loot, all of these systems combine to ensure each playthrough and every player's experience is never truly the same. Yeah, show me the type of bosses you got. Oh, he looks pretty. Yeah, I feel like this is very Dark Soulsy, and I love it. Just top down type of view. I saw a Sakura's riddle with plagued enemies. No. Roll it away. The torn. As you can see, this torn has been left to mutate and fester and will prove particularly vicious. Oh, Our yeah, best Jesus. Of is to study his moves and attack whenever we see an opening. He is just all over the fucking place. Bosses are also quite brutal in No Rest for the Wicked. They will punish every mistake you will make. I can fucking tell, my god. Skills you've learned, and you just that makes me excited for this game. I appreciate that. As you can see, No Rest for the Wicked is an intensely skill-based game. Your gear greatly influences your power in battle, but whether you die or overcome the challenge is ultimately down to your skill. So basically, get good. Oh, it's neck and neck. Oh, he did that on fucking purpose. He totally did that on purpose. Along your journey, you will come across the town of Sacrament, the capital of Isola Sacra. Sacrament is a war It's really place. pretty. But over the course of your yeah, journey, I agree when they say the style looks like it's painted, and I really, really oh, like that. In order to demonstrate that, let's we'll switch to a realm that's already a little more advanced. Our goal is to make Sacrament as interesting and interactive as possible. Need about it, Mary Weather. Is that your service? service? Mary, we agreed. Don't pretend you don't <laughs> smell it. Come have a chase. We agreed. And players will be in control over how Sacrament will evolve over time. For example, after my previous expedition, I helped Fillmore rebuild his smithy. He now sells better gear 
and is also able to upgrade our gear to a higher level. To that effect, we aim to make investing resources into Sacrament as satisfying and rewarding as investing resources into your character is. Okay. Let's take a look at another I like way that to actually. Make sacrament your own. Building the Sacrament reminds sacrament me of a um, be able to purchase real estate. What is it? Darkest Dungeon, which I thought was really cool. Well, if you have the funds to afford it. <laughs> if you have the funds to afford it. Property in Sacrament Damn. can get a little bit expensive. But accumulate yeah, I can the riches, see. and you can choose from a wide range of properties to suit anyone's taste. Your house is the perfect place to stash your loot, craft items, relax, and plan everything out for your next big It's actually a pretty nice house. Through the dangerous areas like the layout, it's very cycle. interesting. I just moved in here, so it's a little bit barren. Let's fix that. Fix the floors. Out on your journey, you'll be able to collect or harvest valuable resources. Oh, yeah. I'm all for this game. I love gear, building and harvesting and changing home, stuff or up, even too. even make improvements to the town itself. Catch a fish, for example, and it can be cooked and eaten, of course. But certain fish scales might even make for some fine arm. So you gotta determine which well, one's the I best on one the to go with. Sakura, I collected some pine wood. So now let's make use of that and make this place a little bit more cozy. Housing is incredibly cool in No Rest for the Wicked. Since oh wow, it's like grid, pixel by pixel too, so you can really put it in the center if you want. It's not off a grid system, which I really appreciate. That is not off a grid system. The table looks nice, but it's missing something. Perfect. Ah, this is much better. So While much some better. Some items you can place in your house are just cosmetic. Our goal is for most of them to be functional and have a gameplay purpose. With a range of properties to purchase and an incredibly flexible interior design system, we hope players will be able to I find appreciate and design a very flexible place design system for, them for sure. To call home. Cause that's one of my biggest issues when creating like a home or like a base or something is how flexible it could be. One last thing we'd like to show you today is a system we call Alive. Although No Rest for the Wicked features a traditional campaign, it was important to us that the Solar Sector is very much a living, breathing world. In order to show you what that means, we're going to go to an area called Mariner's Keep. This is an area I've previously ventured through and explored. However, since my last journey through here, Nif have overrun the local area. Ooh. You see, they seem crazy. For me and this is endgame type shit. I like the way they walk. <laughs> the world of No West for the Wicked is constantly changing around you. And each time you visit a region, you'll be faced with a drastically different experience. Oh, so is this ba Mariner's Keep? Is that basically it being a roguelite? It's a roguelite, Mariner's Keep. The game itself isn't a roguelite, but like they're, like this part makes it maybe. It might not have the basic fundamental, but I guess like the map continuing to change might be it. Or something similar. And no rest for the wicked. Oh, that's spooky. That is shit. You never really know what to expect. You gotta stay on your toes, baby. For those of you who asked about Endgame, yes, we've got you covered. While we don't want to give away too much at this point, once you reach the Endgame, you can enter the Serum Crucible. This is where you'll have to test your map against some of the toughest enemies within No Rest for the Wicked. Ooh, that's really cool, actually. Our goal is and always has been to create a very different action RPG, one that will hopefully move the genre forward. We believe that Moon Studios is an incredibly unique position to deliver on this vision. We have some of the best You guys do have a pretty different united behind this. delivery and we're not with afraid this. To take I really the risks enjoy it. We need to be taken in order to change up the status quo. 
We've poured an incredible amount of blood, sweat and tears into this project. And now we're at a point where we need your help to shape and build Wicked into the best game it can possibly be. Therefore, we'd like to invite all of you who love this genre, who grew up with it the same way we did, and who are excited to see a new take on it, to join us on this journey. And so we're happy to announce that we're going to be launching No Rest for the Wicked after all of these years into Steam Early Access next month. Oh, hell April yeah. Edition. That's going to be sick. Over the course of Early Access, we'll I'll be I'll see what they say action, for Early Access for this game, game because this is a game I actually and you will see also myself see playing. Ain't no risk for the Wicked. At which point, Money the plan is to release on trees. <laughs> Wicked every time has been I think built from that. the ground up the with multiplayer in mind. So the first of these major updates that we will be releasing in early access, multiplayer. Will be That's you fucking with an sick. Multiplayer oh, like Coliseum type allowing shit? you to play Wicked alongside or even against your friends. Our second major content update will bring all new regions to Sakura, new enemies, narrative updates, and so much more. With story, system, and gameplay content updates to follow thereafter. Your support and feedback during this very critical part of early access really does make a difference. No Rest for the Wicked begins a new era for Moon Studios, and we're committed to this project for the long run. We're incredibly excited about what it we're looks doing cool as shit. Wicked, I mean, I can't even imagine how heavy that fucking hat access, is. And we can't <laughs> wait to show you all. Got candles stuff, all over it. How are they staying up? Once the showcase is over, be sure to tune in to your favorite media and content creators for the hands-on impressions of No Rest for the Wicked immediately following this showcase. We can't wait to see you all on April 18th. Hey, thank you so much for this trailer. I think this game looks really fucking cool. I really like how the system works and you get to play as like different fucking people. You're not just stuck to the one person, um, which is something I really appreciate because then it's like, oh, well, maybe this person is better for this position. I mean, there is an appeal to both where you have to like overcome your weakness when fighting these bosses. Um, man, maybe I should have signed up for that. I would really like to play No Rest for the Wicked for them. Oh, there's just, it's just a whole bunch of like back and forth of the same shit. But I think this game looks really fucking cool. I think I've definitely done a, a trailer on it before. Maybe it was like the reveal trailer. I am going to wait to see what people say in the early access before I get it. But since they've done Ori in the Blind Forest and Willy of the Wisp, I really enjoy this company's game so far. And I cannot wait to find out more and see how actually well put together it is once early access comes out. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys agree, if you guys are going to get this game because of the other two games that they made and or like if this is a type of genre that you love what would you say this is like rpg mixed in with something else let me know in the comments down below for any information about this game love to hear from you guys but that is all the time i have for you guys today thank you guys so much for watching i highly appreciate your time as always but please do not forget to subscribe and or follow not only to my youtube but to my twitch you guys know where my youtube is at but you can find my twitch at twitch.tv slash the game dame thanks guys and i'll see you in the next video Bye bye